I'm gonna tell you the problem, I just jumped off the porch with dirty glove bastard. Turn me up, you know I'm with this shit. And burn them up and lead on candles lit. And show the look in my tool up, can win with pressure. All right, today we got Tay the Problem what's hopping up the bro? porch with us. What's going on, gang? Man, shit, chilling out, chilling out. So what? Not much. What you out here working on? Why you out here in Atlanta? Uh, shit, I went to the studio, made a couple songs, and patchwork in that loud house. For sure. So how does that compare to working out here versus working back at home? Uh, shit, it's a little different because shit, you know, it's like a better studio setting down here. Mm -hmm. At home, you feel me? We got cool studios. We got. Well, the only studio I really go through is uh uh Asman. Feel me? That's a cool studio. But I like it down here. Feel me? Got a chill vibe shit. For sure. So how would you describe life in Indianapolis right now? Uh shit. Yo, it depends on where you at really. It's still you got good parts, but you know, you got the thugging parts where you got the killing, the drugs on you, all that, this and that, but you got the good parts of Indianapolis too, but you know, figure out where you're going to before you go though. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you go to the right area. For sure. So what part of the city are you from and what parts would you consider to be the good parts versus the parts of the bad part? Uh, off 34th Street, off the neighborhood, 4621 area code. But you feel me, uh, it's, it's killing over there. You can go all the way out north, all the way out north, that's a good area. East, it ain't good. South, it ain't good. West, it ain't good. <laughs> out north, though, you good out north. Anywhere out north, you good. Mm. That's what's up. So how would you describe 34th Street versus the rest of the city? Uh, she, you know, I don't really too much go nowhere but 34th Street, but, you know, uh, I'm going to say, she, we the best. I feel like this shit. We the best. Mm. I love my city. Shit. I love my neighborhood. And shit, ain't nobody fucking with us over there. Mm. So shit, yeah, shit. We got the best drugs. Come holler at us. <laughs> yes, sir. So, as mentioned before, Indianapolis is known as a violent city. Yeah. Can you talk to us about your brother who was recently shot and killed? Yeah, my brother is Lil Juan. Everybody know I'm Lil Juan from Bad News. You know, he from 29th Queen Queenside. And shit, my brother got killed when I was 12. In like 2010, and shit, it was fucked up. Shit, when my brother got killed, that's when I really jumped off the porch in the streets. That's when I really picked up my first gun the day my brother got killed, when he got mm -hmm. my first gun. So it was like, it's fucked up, feel me? My mama still go through it to this day. How old was your brother when he died? My brother was 19. Mm -hmm. As mentioned before, you said once your brother died, you said you jumped off the porch yourself. Yeah. So what are some of the trials and tribulations you experienced from the streets jumping off the porch at age 12? Uh, shit, when I first jumped off the porch, uh, I really started first. I was really just smoking weed, getting high head. And then it went on to fight in the light, start fighting. Then we weren't really at my age when I was like 12, 13, wasn't too much shooting going on. But really, I just had a gun just because of some fact my brother got killed. So I was really always on my toes with it. but. It was really just fighting and gang fights because I was in Young News. We had a little clique called Young News. And we was beefing with almost everybody. So, mm -hmm. you know how that go. Yeah. Is it true that you used to box at, uh, when you were young too? Yeah, I used to box around 10, 11, 12, 13. How I was went, that? I went 12 and 0. Oh. I couldn't be beat. Still can't be beat. For sure. Yeah, I'm still a fool. For sure. So what type of student were you in school? Uh, shit, I, I was bad. I was bad <laughs> as hell. I was fighting a lot. My mom getting called a lot. She uh, wasn't paying attention. Then she, I dropped out freshman year. It wasn't really no point for me to go no more because I wasn't. I was bullshitting around, and I was really trying to get some money. So I just dropped out. Went and did what I had to do. Take care of business. Thought I had a son at that time. So, you know, there you go. How would you describe life dropping out your freshman year? You know, that's like everybody who knows who goes to high school, like, oh, your freshman year, your most yeah, important year. So I'm, I'm shitty, I dropped out. I'm shitty as fuck, I dropped out. I heard it was fun. I heard high school fun as fuck. <laughs> All I experienced was middle school and elementary. That's really why I dropped out, because middle school and elementary, so damn boring. Mm. But shit, I heard high school lit. You know, I'm shitty, I ain't experienced it, but 
uh, I, I was bored, really. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I was bored. I was at the spot most of the time. Me and my nigga Trey, we was at the spot most of the time. My cousin, you know, so you feel me? It was, it was boring, really, but I was making some money. I was doing what I was doing, going to parties, going to the club at a young age, getting in with my cousin, and I'm going to the strip club. So it was cool, but I wasn't really around nobody my age, so it wasn't mm. really fun. You feel me? Exactly. So it's safe to say you grew up at an early age. Yeah, I grew up at an early age. And how do you feel that transition to your adulthood? Like, do you think, like, because the things you experienced early on, the reason why you are today? Yeah, it got to do with a lot of the reason why I am today. But it's like, uh, I learned a lot early. So it's like, I wish I did at the same time. Because, like, this at the time we supposed to have fun, do this, do that. I don't want to do too much no more. You feel me? I don't like going out too much no more. I don't go to the club like that. I don't really do too much like that. I just chill out, sit back, stick to myself, either with my kids, you know me, smoke weed and do me. For sure. You mind telling us what happened to y'all? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened to my eyes. Bro. I just woke up one boy, my shit was rolling. Word. So I uh, shit. I went to the doctor. I uh supposed to be getting my shit fixed about a month. I missed my last appointment. I might miss this appointment. But I don't know what the fuck happened to it. I'm getting used to having this motherfucker closed at this point, though. Yeah. I'm gonna ask y'all shit. I already asked. One thing you got in mind though, you mad confident about it though. You ain't yeah, said. I, don't, bro, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I, I'm who I am who I am. I'm coming For like sure. this. Shit. It's what it is. That's how you gotta be, bro. What's some of the biggest life lessons you feel you learned in the streets? Oh shit. Stay focused. Shit, stay to yourself, really. Don't really trust too many people. Cause you'll get snaked quick by letting the wrong people in. Stay humble. Try and be too big here. That'll get you fucked over. Well, especially where I'm at. It'll get you fucked up where I'm at. Trying to be too big here. Think you that dude. And shit, just, just be yourself. Don't try to be something you ain't. Just, just be yourself. Cause try and be something you ain't. It's going to get you fucked up in the long run. Right. How long have you been making music? I say about it. Well, I did music a couple times when I was younger, just playing around, but getting serious and really doing this shit, probably about seven or eight months, six, seven months, somewhere around there. I got an EP about to drop soon. For sure. What's the name of the EP? My Time. And what was the inspiration behind completing the EP and making it a complete deal? Uh, shit, really, like, my manager, my nigga Zach, he was really the one who really talked me into doing the music shit. You feel me? I really went into it at first. I was really like, fuck it, I ain't gonna do shit for me, don't too many people make it after that. You feel me? But he really got to me, like, shit, we can. We're gonna do what we do. So it was like that, that got me, cause it's like, shit, we could be the first to do shit. You feel me? We could do our thing. And it's like, shit, I'm trying, I'm trying to do something different for my babies and for my mom. You feel me? We tired of being in the situations we in. I feel that. So where did you feel some of your musical inspirations came from? Uh, Jeezy, Boosie, Webby, Gotti, uh, Tip, uh, shit. We got a couple more motherfuckers. I sure I gotta say my nigga Chief too. Gotta say Chief Key. For sure. Cause he, he, he clown for our generation. He did his thing for our generation. Yeah, that nigga clown. For sure. People don't, not too many people like when they yeah. get that man, it's crazy. Yeah, I'll, I'll fuck with you. you but you know, you from up north, we from up north. We you gotta fuck with yeah. So, what motivated you to start taking music seriously? Zach. Zach being in my ear. I swear I wouldn't have did it. Zach being in my ear and seeing my baby. And I wanna be rich for they can. You feel me? Just be out the hood. You know, be in a different environment, see something different. Mm. You know I, mean? so I don't wanna know the life that we was living. I don't wanna have to go through what we was going through. How would you describe your sound and what do you want it to mean to listeners? Uh, like, part I got, what I'm trying to do is do like, I'm trying, I'm trying to put the trap shit with the party and shit and put in some real deal street shit. So I'm trying to make it to where you can have fun while you listen to some street shit or some trap shit. You see what I'm saying? For sure. How would you describe the music scene in Indianapolis right now? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't too much listen to a lot of motherfuckers in Indianapolis. Uh, I know the little nigga Nunu, he's doing his thing. And I heard another little couple other little dudes like, uh, you know, it's a little nigga now. And some little nigga, my nigga Zach, be playing. He doing his thing, too. It's a couple motherfuckers doing their thing in the city, but a lot of motherfuckers that be doing their thing in the city end up getting locked up or killed or some shit. So 
and I ain't really too many people in the city doing their thing right now, but we got a couple more focus clowning. For sure. Would you say the artists are supportive of one another? Oh, oh no, I don't think so. They need to be, but I don't really think so. If everybody come together, everybody can get money together. It'll be bigger. We can really turn that up, but I don't, know. I don't think it's gonna really happen because everybody beefing you. Not this shit, y'all. Why do you feel the talent is so overlooked in Indianapolis? Uh, probably motherfuckers scared, man. Keep it all real. Probably people scared. I don't know what it is. But a lot of motherfuckers don't come to the city to really figure out what's going on. They don't really listen to the city. So they ain't going to never really feel our background, feel the struggle that we got going on. Feel me? So they don't really know what it is until they really come and check us out, figure out what it is. For sure. So let's talk about your new single, Turn Me Up. How did that come about? What was the inspiration? What was the vibe like in the studio putting up uh, that song together? Oh, uh, shit. Uh, really, I made the song the late night by myself. I was boarding the bitch in the crib, feel me? And I don't know why the fuck I was turned up. But I was turned up by my damn self. Wrote that motherfucker. And then I got with the nigga Playboy. Mm. And we put the beat and he put the beat with it. I rapped the song to him. He put the beat together. That nigga touched a couple keyboards and he put shit together quick. Man, he's a fool. But shit, we got that motherfucker together, shot a video. And the video came out perfect. Man, that motherfucker turned up and shit. We're going to keep turning up to that motherfucker. So yeah, go follow that. Go find that video. Turn me up. Take the problem. For sure. Do you feel like you got to channel certain energy when you making music so that the listeners can reciprocate what you was feeling when you was in that mood in the studio? Yeah, you got to really go off how you feel. You can't really be bullshit. I mean, because I, I done went in there a couple times and I wasn't really in my zone and I wasn't really feeling it. But at the same time, they say it's the pain that was in there, but I wasn't really feeling it. So I had to go in there and do it again. And shit, that's the one that really came out perfect to me. Mm. So what's some of the feedback you've been getting on Turn Me Up? Well, I've been getting good feedback. I've been getting a lot of good feedback. I've been getting some funny feedback too, <laughs> but I've been getting some perfect, a lot of good feedback. It's on Say Cheese. Uh, it's on Dirty Glove Bastard too, page two. I've been getting a lot of feedback. How does that make you feel to see that people enjoy your music? Uh, shit, it make me feel good. I love it. I like to turn old people, you know. All they got to do is book me. We're going to come turn the city up. I swear we're going to turn that motherfucker up. We party like no other. And you currently working on? My mixtape. Yeah. I'm working on my mixtape. It's called uh, My Time. I'm, I'm trying to get it to drop by August 26th on my brother's birthday. Hoping I can get it to drop by then. But we're working on it. We're working on it. We're getting in the process. But yeah. Soon it drops, just be looking for it. My time. For sure. Will this be your first project? Yeah, it's going to be my first EP. By myself, actually. That you put together all together by yourself? Yeah, it's my first EP. What can you tell us about the process of organizing all this music and putting it together, piecing it together, making sure this sound right? Just the organization of it. Oh, shit. It's, it's good when you're working with good people that's going to be real with you. And mm -hmm. when you rap some shit, they're going to be like, nah, bro, that shit trash. Hell nah, bro. Don't do that shit. Like, all right, bet, bet. So, you feel me? When you got motherfuckers like that around you, then it's good. But if you got motherfuckers around you that's going to tell you everything good that you dropping and everything, you don't want that shit. Because, like, you're going to drop some shit that's going to be some bullshit. And you're going to have motherfuckers looking crazy at you. But at this time right now, we're trying to turn it up. So, we're trying to make every single one a hit. Everything that we drop supposed to be a hit. We ain't trying to drop no bullshit. For sure. And what can listeners expect to take from that project? Uh, they can take a really half a uh, turned up, really dead. Yeah, you get some real shit, some street shit, and really get in tune with who I am. For sure. Any features on the project? Uh, not, not right now. Not mm -hmm. right now. If you could have a feature on there, who would you have on it? Uh, I don't know. I might not do a feature just because, like, I need to get them in tune with me. Mm -hmm. Let them know who I am for the first time and. You know, feel me, figure out, let my folks figure out who I am. That's real. You don't never hear too many artists just like, nah, I want to keep it solo. Yeah, You'll hear see, them say a big wanna, name, you know? I want to do features, you feel me, in the future, you feel me, in the future. I heard you say it, but I want to do that soon. That's real. So in the future, let's talk future rise, right? Who are some of the artists you can see yourself collaborating with or want to collaborate with? Anybody that got a bag? <laughs> 
<laughs> but oh uh, she's Jeezy. She I wanna fuck with Jeezy heavy. She I wanna fuck with uh really everybody I named at first. I wanna fuck with all them you know young people. I wanna fuck with a young boy, I wanna fuck with baby, I wanna fuck with uh, a couple other motherfuckers. I just really don't know their names. I don't really I don't really be paying attention to music like that. I'm really trying to get in tune. What about the producers you've been working with? Uh I've been working with Playboy and I've been working with uh Listen Up. I'm the only two that I've worked with so far. What can you say about the chemistry between you and those two producers that produces such good music between you two? Uh, listen up. I like how I like how he that little dude, that little dude turn up. And he young. And he young to be doing what he doing. So as he get older, he gonna do his thing. He gonna be a fool. And Playboy, I've been listening to Playboy since I been young. He per he's somebody that's from the city. For sure. And he been doing his thing in the city for a long time with the music and with the beats and all that shit. And I've been fucking with what he do. So for I always sure. want to work with him. For sure. What about any producers on another scale, like the big boys? Anybody you want to see yourself working with? I really try to figure out who everybody is. I don't really know too much right now when it comes down to music and shit. For like, sure. I'm really just jumping off into this music shit for real, for real. For sure. All I know is shit, I got a background to tell you. Yeah. Do you have your next single picked out already? Or are you still fishing for that? Yeah, I got that already too. That motherfucker called, uh, shit, I'm trapped. Yeah, and I got a video about to drop with it too, so be looking for that too. Yeah, it's all coming soon. So what's your label situation looking like? You independent? Yeah, I'm independent. What's the independent grind like? How's that been for you? I'm a grinder, so shit, I'm used to it. You feel sure. me? So it ain't really no different than what I'm used to, what I've been doing. So I've been grinding my whole life. We just really going to different cities. That's the only different thing about the grind. For you sure. going around and meeting other people and doing your thing like that. For That's sure. the only difference. Are you even interested in signing with labels? Yeah, I'm interested. I'm, just, I'm looking for that bag. For sure. I'm What's up to say? What was it going to take? You said the bag. I'm looking for that bag. I see and you, bro. Shit, some good people. I ain't really going to fuck with somebody that's bullshit. Like, you got to be a good deal and good people. So what you got coming up next? Uh, shit, I got the, I got my time coming up next. I got I'm Trapping coming up next. And I got, uh, I got another single that's going to come after I'm Trapping. How they break. So I'm gonna be dropping back to back and I'm gonna try to keep on dropping back to back to back. Keep on trying to hit y'all with shit. For sure. Any shout outs, any last words for the people? Uh shit. Be looking for the uh Tater Problem. Go follow me, Tater Problem on uh Twitter and on Instagram. Turn me up, you know I'm with the shit.